Previously on Super Idols RPG. They just have roadies that just go with them and build stages wherever they go. And Ashley laughs. Oh, this is courtesy of uh, my daddy. He just happens to have access to some of the latest and greatest miniaturization technologies. Um, and she holds up kind of like a little pod in her hand that looks like if this space were smaller, it would fit in that little pod. There is an Instagram superstar in the audience, Papaya. Could I ask you just for a tiny, tiny favor? You take a little something out of your phone and we put something else? I meant what I said about Crimson Signal being interested in you. I don't know if you heard, but there's a tour of the Crimson Signal headquarters coming up fairly soon, and I would be most obliged to see you there. I will have to check with my people, of course, but I think I can make it. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I am your GM, Aaron Cerise, and today with me are T. Hello. And Luca. Hello. All right. So today we just have a, a good old duo session today. We don't have a, we don't even have a guest this time. It's just the two of you being buds. Yes. <laughs> Dance team. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yes, dance team. It is, it is. It's the yellow and black team, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true, that's both of our colors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which should be fun for today, because we have a bit of a, a fun little thing planned for today. So as y'all might remember, Queen Bee had an interesting invitation happen at the end of the session with uh, with Nathan with Zero Degrees. The Idolgram influencer Papaya in exchange for deleting some embarrassing footage from her phone, asked Queen Bee to make an appearance at a tour of Crimson Signal headquarters on Saturday, which is the the Saturday after, you know, <laughs> the downpour incident. <laughs> so that is coming up. But before we get into that, since that is jumping forward a little bit in time from where we currently are, uh, let's fill in a little bit of the time between the end of last session and this Saturday. So what do y'all think you've been doing at, in terms of practice and preparations for the gig or anything else that you're doing as a part of the club or like your own independent investigations into whatever you're looking into right now? Well, I think we've been pushing hard on the dance practice and uh, trying to figure out the best way to make everything work and look good and like complement uh, Vibi's uh, singing style. And also Alan has been uh, googling uh, Crimson Signal and trying to figure out what their environmental footprint would be, because that's the sort of thing that would help Alan figure out if they're bad guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also a few leaflets about the community cleanup initiative have been left in the Idol Club room. Oh yeah, weird. But I definitely take one for myself. Something you might check out at some point. You just Angie has this green thumb that nobody knows about. Yeah, well, and we need to raise some goodwill with the community after you know the downpour thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good PR as well. For sure, yeah. for sure. Mm, so there's definitely a, a couple discreet things happening. So there's uh, your dance prep. There's your environmental club activities, and there's also the Crimson Signal research. I feel like we need a custom research move. Y'all do investigation and research that is probably meant for a mask scam. <laughs> <laughs> we really do. It could be just because like early, we're early on and we're all teenagers and we're just learning how, but I feel like... Yeah, that is a narrative that we've been exploring quite a bit is is looking at seeing what other idol groups are doing and that kind of thing. So maybe we do need to move. I feel like I should import the like investigate a mystery move from play or from uh, Monster of the Week. Yeah, actually that's 
You took that right out of my mind. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> I might I might just do that for this time and then write a more specific to masks custom move after this. <laughs> yeah. 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 Excuse me for not prepping this. I, it's been a very busy couple of weeks for me. Uh, I've literally oh, just moved. So I'm actually just going to quickly open the basic move sheet for Monster of the Week, which I do have. To fill the silence while we're waiting, I would say after working with the drama club in a surprisingly productive way for once without making more enemies, um, (laughs) we worked on a really nice calendar. I don't think uh, Yasmin was as excited about all the colors and stuff that I was. Yeah, well, she was very uh, much into like a stark black and white design, maybe with purple accents at most. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, no, we have to have specific (laughs) stickers for the drama club and for the idol club. And it's all color coded. And (laughs) it's like, I don't see why we need more than two colors. There's two groups. (laughs) Yeah. um, (laughs) It took a bit of explaining. (laughs) And I think I could visualize the calendar and it's like for the idol club stuff and you probably is like a different color or a different sticker set for like each activity so like dance practice singing lessons or whatever <laughs> and uh the drama club is just like drama club and it's there in like ink or something <laughs> yeah all right well i think i can probably roll a few of these things into one move at least because yeah. we do have the Idol activities move. (laughs) Cue the theme music. (laughs) So this can probably encompass both your dance practice between the both of you and also Mm -hmm. your continued collaboration with the drama club. Uh, So this will just generally give an idea of how well things are going. Okay. And I'll just uh, read the description of the move again. When time passes and one or more team members work on an idol related activity, Everyone participating says what they're doing, which you've done, and a representative for the group makes a flat 2d6 roll, and there's some conditional modifiers we can add or subtract from it. We add one to this roll if the whole team is working toward the same goal. You think that counts in this case? I do. Like, well, I was thinking dance practice and calendar stuff, so I figure we'd be working together for the dance practice. Absolutely. Yeah, I think your general goal is, like, to work well with the drama club and work towards your gig. So that's that's the yeah. same goal. Mm-hmm. And I think finding a name really helped. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It really helped unify everybody's work ethic. Yeah. It's like there's just been new life in the group ever since we came together. And uh, Valerie didn't apologize, but still <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> went on. So it's like there's a renewed vigor now that we have. A name. All right. We can also add one to this roll if at least one participant has no conditions marked. I don't remember if I have any conditions. <laughs> oh, no, I don't currently. All right. So we're currently at a oh, plus yeah. two for this roll. Oh, yeah. I seem to be. Oh, yeah. Are you condition free right now as well? Seems like I am. Very good. We would subtract one from this roll if one or more team members have spoke out against the activity. That is clearly not the case in this situation. And also, we already covered conditions, so we're not subtracting one for two or more conditions marked. So you're doing a flat 2d6 roll with a plus two modifier for this move. Which one of you wants to roll that? I think Kenji has been managing and organizing, so it sounds like she should be the one rolling. Alright. If it's okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. There we go. Very nice! That is a 10 full hit. did it. All right, so on a 10 plus, your idle activities truly sparkle. The GM will detail an opportunity or benefit your group gains from their efforts. So what is appropriate here? I think probably just that your dance practice is going very smoothly. You're really starting to tighten up the moves and solidify the choreography. It's interesting trying to work around Anne not being there, actually the fact that Anne has not been here is starting to worry you because it has, as the days start to pass and she still doesn't show up for school and her parents don't really have much to report because they're, uh, spoilers, they're not really great parents. Um, sorry, I'm kind of bringing down this move a bit, but I feel like we have to go over this. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Yeah, so people are, you're starting to worry about 
Anne, uh, because nobody can get a hold of her. But you are still able to, like, focus during your sessions, at least, and you're still able to get a lot of great work done. And as for your work with the drama club, that you pretty much described it perfectly. You're able to work things out with Yasmin with the calendar and also, like, just coordinating what everybody's doing. Uh, you get all the colors. You even get a few extra stickers you weren't even expecting. And I think, yeah, everything is just going fairly smoothly. Yeah, I just went, like, a little hardcore at the last sticker sale at the stationery shop, so... <laughs> so I guess your your benefit would be that the drama club is not going to, like, harangue you about anything for a bit. And you're going to, let's say, if you have any, like, dance-related obstacles that are coming up in the, in the near future, you will get a plus one on those rolls. Ooh, okay. So that'll That's count good. for I'll say that that'll count for for this session. Uh you'll get a plus 1 on any dance related moves you try to do. All right, cool. I think for your research, Alan's research doesn't really turn up much more than they turned up the first time around just because the company is so new, there aren't really any references to them before like a few months ago that unless they're like clearly unrelated, like some other crimson or signal unrelated terms, just that they're again uh, a new and up and coming corporation that has secured a decent amount of financial financial backing so far and is starting to expand their advertising campaign. Uh, you do find some reviews of their products. The reviews all seem to be pretty good. Like you'll get a few like negative ones in there, but they're the usual reviews from people who just clearly don't know how to use product. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. they they do high tech, right? Yeah, yeah, they they do high tech kind of like concert equipment. Definitely okay. aimed at like industry super idol types. Oh, uh, one that one thing I forgot. Can I check zero degrees social presence? Oh, definitely. Actually, I was going to ask you about um, social presence too. So this will lead into that. Well, I'm checking uh, uh, zero degrees uh, idolgram page to see what they published recently. They they have been posting, but weirdly, it hasn't been any like photo or video posts it's been a lot of text posts and also like if there are images or videos they're like older ones okay huh. might might just be leaking their ones yeah <laughs> uh yeah so they're, they're probably trying to like just keep it low key right now as far as you can tell they get whipped by a couple of teenagers <laughs> <laughs> um and there's also um a noticeable uptick in sponsored posts for crimson signal of course. Mm. A <laughs> lot of hashtag. What's a good hashtag other than just hashtag Crimson Signal? Signal boost? Ooh, yes, yes, that's yeah, perfect. Good one. Hashtag good one. signal boost, hashtag red wave, or no, that's that's a real hashtag. Never mind. No, signal boost is the is the good one. Yes. It's a charming <laughs> one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so like hashtag crimson signal, hashtag signal boost, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, so there's not much other than the fact that they're just like posting more low-key than normal. But as for other social stuff, I do have a question for you. Do you think Alan has set up social media for Queen Bee specifically yet? I think so. I think after the encounter with Papaya, they realized that they need to do that. Okay, so you, you literally like just started it the other day. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to say you probably, since you're, you're just getting it started, not a lot of people know where to find you yet, so you haven't gotten a lot of attention there yet. But you've started to notice, as as people do find you, you're getting a lot of weirdly negative comments, and they do seem to all suspiciously have a, like, a P with a sparkle emoji next to it in their user bios. Hmm. So they're they're leaving kind of like, snippy comments about your look and about your attitude and like specifically this is drawing from like the the comment that you made on idolgram at the end of your guest session where you declared that people should bow to you and people are being like oh where where do you get off being so presumptuous and high and mighty yeah that would have worked well if i had my bees with me but they mm -hmm. couldn't come so <laughs> it was just missing the bees that's a really <laughs> yeah absolutely that was the problem anyway yes so so these papaya stands seem to be coming after you a little bit from the speech that you made on idolgram yeah alan doesn't really know how to answer so right now just ignoring most of them blocking uh, the most uh, virulent ones 
Oh yeah, block and report. That's always the best thing to do. Uh, especially it's good for Queen Bee being the, like, aloof sort that fits her yes. persona. I'm not gonna engage with these peons. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they're, they're the worker bees. Yes. Okay, so we covered your practice, we covered your research. Was there anything else I was missing? I guess, do we want to, do we want to get into a little bit more of, like, what people are thinking about the fact that Anne is missing? Because I kind of just said a bunch of stuff. How do you guys actually feel about that, do you think? At first, I feel like Angie would be very annoyed, but now it's been a few days, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you're leading up to Saturday, it, it's getting into Thursday and Friday, and you still haven't heard anything from her. Yeah, so she's getting pretty worried, but also Anne's her own person, and there was an absence, right? As in uh, the school is aware or was notified that she's gone or... There wasn't actually. She had an unexcused absence on her first day away. And from what you've heard, by the time the school wrangled an answer out of her parents, they said that when she takes off like this, it's usually to go stay with a friend. And they said they'd check in with that friend, but the school hasn't heard back from them on that yet. So... <sighs> Not really, no. Yeah, so it's getting to the point where she's torn between uh, being really worried and also stressed about the performance coming up. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I think you're, you're, we'll just leave it at that. You're just kind of like stewing in like some weird emotional territory, but like you're holding it together relatively well as far as like working on stuff goes, at least. Yeah, it's all the dance practice. She's just getting all of that energy out, and that's yeah. how she's been able to cope with everything. Because there's also probably a part of her that's like, this is a future Angie problem. The immediate thing is this thing. Mm, fair enough. Do you think you've been working with, with Kyle some more, too, on any of this? Yeah, I think we would have. there would have been like a few bro sessions... To do oh the, yeah. So see, um, seeing to, a good friend probably helps keep you relatively stable too. Yeah, and he's definitely a chill presence. So, but yeah, she's probably checking in with him every now and then, sending a video on, on the choreo and getting his input and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's fair. And he he's been doing his own kind of research into Crimson Signal as well, but he hasn't turned up much more than Alan has. Unfortunately, there's just not much out there to find yet. Yeah, so as far as we can see, just a boring tech company. But yeah, for idle stuff. <laughs> that's trying to pretend that they're exciting <laughs> the, the yeah. way that brands on Twitter do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and how is uh, Alan feeling about Anne's absence? Pretty bad, because the last thing that happened between them was uh, Anne yelling at Queen Bee and... Queen Bee unleashing a horde of bees in response. So that Ooh, yeah. that was a bad moment, and we never really had a chance to talk about that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so that you're the, so maybe you've been trying to get a hold of her a little more and just not had trying much to text success. Her, but no answer, doesn't even seem not sure she even visualizes. But Aww. I mean one thing that makes Alan feel better is that and went to see the, the venue, so she was not completely done with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, you, yeah, you got word from the others that like she was yeah, there and was into she was there and stuff. Also, aliens exist, and also yes, and also <laughs> yeah, or other dimensions a, or something. <laughs> yeah, and another Texas, and yeah, just oh. a lot of. Yeah. Oh, I I guess while we're on the topic of people who are absent, you actually have received um uh, something concrete on uh what's going on with Cynthia. There actually has been a, a message to the school telling them that the family emergency that had called her away in the first place is looking to be more of a long-term thing and she is actually transferring away from Fort McNally unexpectedly. Oh. Yeah, so That's unfortunately, uh, you know for sure that Cynthia is not coming back at this point. Okay. So we've lost, as far as we know, we've lost two members of the team. One mm -hmm. in an explained situation, and the other one in an unexplained situation. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, although the fact that you lost two in a relatively short period is is a little kind of, well, both it hits hard and also it's a little like, huh, when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I can't really imagine anybody being able to force Sam to do anything she don't want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true as well. Uh, But anyways, as you're sort of leading towards the end of this school week, you've had a lot of really good progress working on stuff. You've heard like some stuff from Jaden and Valerie as they work on the song as well. Um, They've been doing some work with Karen on that front, um, getting that ready and punching it up more and letting you know about any changes in the song that might affect choreography. And so you're in a weird mix of like everybody feels worried, but also is kind of pumped because everything is coming together. Yeah. So this is the mood you find yourselves in on Saturday. Queen Bee is definitely on the docket to attend this session, but I think we probably, well, since (laughs) T is here, we assume that Angie is going along. How do we say that um, Queen Bee has invited Angie to come along? Yeah, I think they think Queen Bee approached Angie at the end of one practice and was like, uh, so... Great job today. Was wondering, do you have any plans for Saturday? No, I was just planning to do some more practicing. Um, I think we have the stage that day. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, you remember when uh, Zero Degrees was trying to turn the mall into their own winter wonderland and we stopped them? Yeah, Um, that was pretty awesome. It was. Honestly, I really wanted to tell the others, but they came out with the aliens, and I just didn't seem like... But still, when I was uh, dealing with that influencer, I got invited to tour the Crimson Signal offices. Oh, you mean like the, the, the electronic company for idle stuff? Yes, and I, I think they were making whatever tech... The zero degrees was using to boost his powers. Oh, quick sidebar. Did we overhear zero degrees talking about why isn't this working? This is supposed to work and stuff like that? Oh, no, you were too far away for that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, the only clue that you have that something might be different is the slight change in their social media presence. Yeah. So unless you're suspicious of that, then yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, other than Zero Degrees really ramping up the sponsorship money on their idle gram, I don't really know much about them. I've looked them up, but there's not much. They're new, they do high-tech stuff. Some looks pretty nice, actually. I was thinking about going, but I'm not sure if going alone is the best strategy. Um, yeah, sure. I'll come along. What time? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, let's see. I should also remind, by the way, Angie actually has heard of Crimson Signal in one other instance. It was when she had her solo scene with Kyle, and he mentioned that Ashley had been by talking about the portable stage and trying to sell them on it. Oh, that's right. Her other rival. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But not like the friendly rivalry kind of rival. Right. (laughs) The, like, intense right. clipboard rivalry. Okay, and from what I remember, uh, Ashley was pretty pushy about it with Kyle, right? Yeah, like, weirdly pushy about it. Yeah, okay. Rewind a little bit. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> oh, those are the guys, sorry, I'm laughing because <laughs> <laughs> I remember now. Yeah, they were, they came around to try and sell their stage equipment to Kyle at our super free and not sponsored dance battle group. (laughs) And it was Ashley, by the way. And he said that she was really pushy about it. Mm -hmm. Did she say that, like, her dad was involved in the high tech, I mean, uh, that kind of miniaturization technology? Yeah. And I mean, they, they made that essentially portable stage for us. As well, so... So maybe she is... Her dad works for Crimson. Yeah. And just, Mm. why would she come and bug us in an old warehouse to sell us stage equipment? Like, we have Mm. a boombox and 
some broken mirrors and that's it. And we're cool with that, but, like, she wouldn't let it go. Hmm. Well, I think this this, this warrants some looking into. Yeah, but I think we should be careful. Yes, I, w- I was just thinking something like that. Maybe we should have, like, a code word. Like, uh, I don't know, you know, like, in the Cats movie, when everything is a complete disaster... And then, out of the blue, Skimble Shanks comes in and rescues the movie for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we could, like, if somebody says Skimble Shanks, that's a signal. Okay, Skimble Shanks. <laughs> Skimble Shanks. <laughs> I love that the Cats movie now lives in this universe, <laughs> and it is also a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> There are all these famous idols in it, and exactly. they just... Exactly. <laughs> it was even worse, because, like, yeah. oh, they the tried to showcase, idols. like, cat t- Taylor Swift's, like, I don't know, magic rainbows from her fingers power. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, like, did not fit in the movie at all. Yeah. And then Jason Derulo was there, and it was just a whole... And, like... He was good in the scene, but they just didn't know what to do with all of his earthquake abilities, and it showed. <laughs> yeah, he tried to. Ma- the, the weird thing about his power is he can only make earthquakes when he says his name, too, so that made it even more awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that they had to replace the scenography more than once. Oh, no. Uh, but yeah, Sk- <laughs> Skimble Shanks was like the. the- <laughs> The breakout star of that movie, because <laughs> nobody was expecting this, like, nobody person to have, like, this amazing number. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> that explained. <laughs> I think, yes, you're probably good to prepare yourselves for this, <laughs> for this outing on Saturday. So, on the day of, by the way, are both of you coming in your normal forms or in your empowered forms? Fully empowered. Queen Bee got the invitation. Queen Bee is gonna show up. Fair enough. I'll be, like, the good approachable cop. Let's say we discuss this beforehand, and, like, we're trying to, like, plan a strategy and how we're gonna question everything. Because, like, we're teenagers, so of course we're like, oh, we gotta scoop it out and stuff. <laughs> but we uh-huh. can't... Yeah, we your, can't... Your little Scooby gang is coming together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But I think for the purposes of the tour, she's probably just going to be wearing, I don't know, jeans and a t-shirt. You may notice that there isn't, like, explicit brands, Mm. um, because she's getting a bit taller and she can't wear all of her last season. I should say, by the way. (laughs) She's a growing um, teenager. You can wear this stuff in your empowered form, too. You have complete control over what you wear in your empowered form. Oh, yeah. I probably still wouldn't. Like, I would figure... I feel like she feels she's comfortable enough to transform if something goes to crap. Oh, sure. And, -hmm. like, uh, her empowered form is her, so she's not disguised or anything. And uh, Papaya's already seen both sides, so... (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we knew what what abilities are available. I didn't fully know that, but uh, that is good to know. Especially because it'd be fun to change up her powers outfit every once in a while. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you can change up your powers outfit whenever you want. Cool. Uh, Look up fashion stuff later. Yeah, it's very, like, (laughs) it's very gem style. Like, it's not hologram clothes, but it might as well be. Yeah, I got you. So in that case, uh, we only need to worry about a label shift for Queen Bee as Queen Bee transforms. Okay. Or wait, did Queen Bee finish off last session as Queen Bee? Did we de- did we detransform for her? I don't think so. Oh, okay, so maybe we just leave the stats where they are then. Okay. Well, unless we want to, but <laughs> unless we want to do a detransform and then a retransform, if you want to get some specific <laughs> stats going in. Ah, uh, my superior, my danger, a bit low, but it's okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know, it's this is. Before we start this thing proper, uh, this actually is probably a good opportunity to roll your obligations move, too, because we haven't done that in oh, a while. Oh, yes. Da-da-da-da. Roll mundane. Oof. That okay. is a nine on the, on the secret identity move. Uh, so right. I've lapsed one obligation. Yes. So everything else is going fine. Uh, what do you think is the, the one obligation that you've fallen a bit behind on? 
Hmm. I think uh, I might have uh, not been working as much because I've uh, been trying to put in the time at practice uh, and also trying to do my part at home. So I think uh, work is the thing that's been suffering. Ah, uh, that's fair. So I think you probably wouldn't have like much of a like consequence for that at the moment. Uh, but definitely if you need to like buy anything at some point, you'll have less money available and your the next time you have to interact with your boss, they might be less amenable to whatever you ask of them. So for right now we'll leave it alone, but <laughs> just wanted to make sure we were keeping on top of that. Okay, so on the day of, you head to the Crimson Signal headquarters building. It is very not hard to find because, for one, it's in an area of downtown that's become a little infamous over the last couple of years because this area of downtown has been under construction for a while and it's been disrupting traffic for a while, which everyone in Cadence complains about incessantly. So lots of people are relieved that this big construction area is finally done. And in the center uh, of this area... Canadian weather. Yes. <laughs> Winter and construction. Exactly. <laughs> Winter and construction, exactly. <laughs> this may or may not be drawn from <clears throat> current conditions in the GM's home city. <laughs> so, anyways, the building itself is very easy to spot in this area. It's, it's of course, a deep red color, so it stands out on the city skyline. And it's a big, like, kind of curved building, kind of like a fancy hotel building. And of course, this curve is meant to evoke the letter C. So it's it's very, very fancy looking and impressive. Like, this wasn't the only thing under construction in this area, but this whole area of downtown has been, like, under, like, development for, like, just building up downtown for a while, and this is part of it. All right, so you arrive at this big, imposing fancy red building and at the door you are greeted by papaya who i don't think we described last time because she kind of just popped into existence last time and i didn't <laughs> have time to think of what she looked like but i'm gonna say she has this sort of like long bright pinkish orange hair she's got some long nails she's got very fashionable clothes kind of like a, a flowy kind of peasant top and like fashionable skirt um she's early 20s and has a a large like fashionable purse that she carries around some of her equipment like a selfie stick in and she has her phone which is encrusted with a lot of like bedazzling stuff so lots of rhinestones and and like a nice like one of those little peg holder things that you can hold your phone with mm-hmm Oh, and she sees the the two of you striding up together and gives you a little a little wave uh, with her phone in hand and says, "Ah, just in time. Thank you so much for showing up, darlings. I'm so glad you both decided to show up. I know the invitation was only for Queen Bee, but I'm I'm very glad to see the other star of Monday's show here as well. Oh, you know I wouldn't miss it for the world, my dear. Absolutely. I've only known you for a combined total of ten minutes, but I get I get that sense from you that you're very reliable. Perceptive, aren't you? Mm-hmm. I'm a very good judge of character. You have to be when you're in a position like mine. And uh, what was your what was your name again, dear? She turns to Angie. Uh, it's Evangeline Blake. Evangeline, what a lovely name. I'm sure your your parents must be very proud of you to, to have named you something so stately. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, <laughs> and she's, she's, she's like... giving you a look that's implying that, that she thinks it's a little bit stuffy. Like, rich person stuffy. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, anyway, so she gives you a, a beckoning with a long fingernail hand, like, this way, darlings. Let's head on inside. The tour is just about to begin. So you head in these very fancy glass doors into an opulent lobby that has a whole bunch of like what look like statues, but upon closer inspection, they appear to be holograms, kind of like what you see in the Neon District. Uh, and what they are, they're, they're statues of famous idols that seemed that just switch and cycle every now and then so it's a different idol every few minutes or so and you have these great long desks where people at the front are and 
lots of nice big palm trees because buildings like these always have palm trees. Yeah. Um, they're really not happy in the Canadian climate, but they're there anyway. <laughs> Poor trees. It's like really warm in the lobby just for the palm trees. Yeah, it's September. It's kind of like chilly outside, but it's like very like perfectly temperature controlled in this building. <laughs> And in the lobby, uh, there are actually a, quite a decent number of people here. Uh, a lot of people in suits, it looks like. Most of the people who have gathered for whatever this event is look like uh, kind of wealthy business people, uh, executives of <clears throat> companies and whatnot. So you get the <laughs> sense that this tour is mainly meant as uh, a way of attracting investors, most likely. But there are a few other young people like you around as well. A few other, like, possibly idle types. And they're they're kind of milling about as well. Uh, some you recognize, some you don't. There's one that you've heard of before that... Actually, there's a couple that you've heard of before that Sophia has mentioned. There is an idol named Ashen Fire here who has magma powers. And there is also a group that you recognize as Sophia's favorite group, Physicians Unknown. <laughs> hmm. Physicians unknown? Yes, we've mentioned this name a few times. <laughs> it's just always in passing, so it goes over yeah. people's heads. <laughs> uh, and they're just there to tour with us, or yeah, pretty much. Like, <laughs> it looks like everybody's kind of just milling about, waiting for the tour to start. Uh, Papaya sort of tells you that she's going to go check on a few people, and we'll let you mill about for a bit before things get underway. Uh, what do you do? Okay. Um, I feel like she likes the idols, but they're not her favorite. And also she doesn't want to be that person. Mm -hmm. So she's kind of just standing on the other side, but doing that thing where you keep looking over because you recognize them and you can't stop doing it. So you keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> Very typical teenage girl behavior. <laughs> And, and one of them does keep does catch you looking. He's kind of a, a shorter Filipino guy, and he looks over at you and kind of like cocks his head, like, "You looking at me? You looking at me?" Like threateningly? No, no, <laughs> not, not threateningly. <laughs> just more like cautiously curious, like, "What are you looking at?" Kind of thing. She's probably just gonna shrug because there's like no one else interesting to look at. So like, do you want me to look at the trees? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't engage, they're probably just going to go back to the conversation uh, that he's having with his bandmates. But yeah, uh, he, di he did give you a bit of a look. <laughs> yeah, no, for her, it's just like, she knows him, but she's not like, you know, a big fan. Like, she's heard a few of their songs, but... Yeah, you haven't really gone into like detail in terms of like looking up who the members are or like what their deal is or why they're even yeah. called. <laughs> why are they called Physicians Unknown? <laughs> Yeah, don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, she's really into the Starry Night Sky fandom, although she'll never tell anyone. So if Starry Night Sky was here, there'd definitely be some fangirling, but everyone else <laughs> just doesn't compare. They're just okay. Yeah, sadly, <laughs> uh, Starry Night Sky is not present. Oh, maybe uh, one they, day. If if they did receive an invitation, they appear not to have shown up. But anyway, is there anything that uh, the two of you want to do while you're milling about? Do you want to talk to anybody, investigate anything, poke around at things, or just talk to yourselves? Um, I do kind of want to investigate, but maybe I, like, look over at Queen Bee and, like, we came up with, like, look codes. <laughs> just like we were gonna <laughs> scope the area. But I'm guessing there's probably like some info boards about Crimson Signal in the lobby somewhere where it was like founded in such and such year. Oh yeah, that sure. Kind you, of thing. Yeah, you can look um, around for that kind of stuff. Yeah, she's probably just gonna look around for that general stuff to kill time. <laughs> And, like, stop looking at a physician's unknown, because it's getting awkward now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, in this case, I'm going to do an on-the-fly import of the investigate a mystery move from another Powered by the Apocalypse game, Monster of the Week, because this game clearly seems to need an investigation move. <laughs> or this campaign does, anyway. I'm just going to read out the move with the corresponding stat for masks and either modify or remove questions that are irrelevant for this game. 
So, when you investigate a mystery, roll plus superior. On a 10 plus, hold 2. On a 7 to 9, hold 1. One hold can be spent to ask the GM one of the following questions. What happened here? What sort of magic is it? What are they going to do, and what is be being concealed here? I will roll and I'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, so it's plus superior we're going to roll on this. Okay, and I've got a minus one. Oh, <laughs> that's a three. <laughs> Just something about the way that the text on the info template it's just nothing's registering like why did you decide to put bright fluorescent yellow on a red background <laughs> yeah, everything else is so sleek here but yeah i think it's also that like they put plaques up but they're all very like infuriatingly vague corporate inspiration babble yeah. <laughs> so There's nothing, nothing no there concrete really... info about when the company was founded or like the most that you find is I'm going to give you this info anyway, so I'll give it to you even on a miss. Uh, the most that you find is that the person who is like the CEO of the company is a man named Clayton Cervantes. Um, that's that's a CEO name. <laughs> but you don't know anything about him. They don't put a picture of him anywhere. Uh, just that that's his name and that uh, he's hoping that this company will synergize with the future or whatever it is companies say. <laughs> Yeah, whatever, inspirational. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if Alan wants to roll investigate a mystery too, I will allow it. I'll I'll do the consequence of your miss after we see what Alan gets. Okay. Uh sorry, tell me again the Oh uh, yes. So what happened here? What sort of magic is it? What can they do? And what is being concealed here? Um Oh yeah. Oh, that's okay, better. so you got a nine, so you get to ask one of those questions. What's being concealed? Hmm. So, something you do notice is, of course, it's a big lobby, so there's a lot of, like, pathways and entranceways to other parts of the building here, especially with such a big curved building. Uh, so there's lots of, lots of doors and elevators and whatnot leading to various places, and they all seem, like, fairly lock standard, except for one you kind of notice is kind of more out of the way than the others, and it seems to be used exclusively by people who are wearing the kind of like deep red sort of dress shirts that seem to be the standard dress for the employees of this building. Like, it looks kind of like a back area and it looks like it might lead to some areas that other people are not allowed in. Hmm. Hmm. And it, it's away from where most of the people who are milling are. Like, they, wherever people have been told to wait, it's away from this area. So that's probably where things are actually happening. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. And it does look, it also looks like this door does have a security guard near it as well. Hmm. Interesting. But we did also have a miss on this move. Yes, <laughs> so so. The, on a miss, <laughs> you do reveal some information to the, <laughs> the force, I guess, that we're reckoning with in this case, since there's not a monster that we're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, so I give some so information. So I get to, to ask you a question in some sort of fashion. Oh, how am I going to work that? I'm going to say as you're sort oh, of. But I also get potential, right? Oh yes, you do. You do get potential for that. Yay! I love. Has anybody leveled up recently? I feel like a lot of people have gotten potential and not advanced. I level as of now. Oh, perfect. That was my last potential I needed to level. Okay. I think it was just uh, Valerie so far out of us that's leveled. Yeah, I'll check with the others on the next session and see. <laughs> but yeah, it feels like uh, y'all deserve some advancement. <laughs> uh, so if you want to figure out your advancement later, you can. Or if you have an idea for it now, let me know. Oh, yeah, I'll figure it out later. I... Oh, yeah, no worries. <laughs> for now, though. Um, so you're both kind of like trying to look around without making it look like you're like getting your nose in things and Queen Bee is doing a slightly better job of looking like she's, I don't know, making small talk with some of the people around like the people in suits and asking like, oh, what, what do you what do? You do? What, are your, <laughs> what are you doing here? But not really listening to them and really trying to get more of a look around the room. Angie is a little less successful at this because she's like going up, she's peering so hard at these plaques trying to make sense of them like her well her nose practically is up against them 
And talking about Clayton Cervantes, you st start to notice, oh wait, is there a picture of him here? I, did, I can't even... And you realize it's not a picture, it's a reflection. And standing behind you is a man who is semi-balding. He's got a very nice sort of silken finish, dark purple suit. And he's giving you a bit of an odd look, like, Ah, I see you're interested in my company. What can I do for you? Uh, well, I was just killing time. I'm here with my friend. And I'm like looking around like, Queen, where are you? <laughs> and, <laughs> and he looks definitely a little suspicious of you because you look very much less fancy than most of the people here. He's like, what are you even doing here? He, do he, does he doesn't actually say that, but that's the attitude he's giving off. What he actually says okay. is, uh, so you, you are on the guest list then. He says that down his nose. Uh, yes, Evangeline Blake. I have some powers. I'm in the idol group at school, so we got invited here by, well, uh, my friend Queen got invited here by Papaya, and she asked me to come along to see if we can get some ideas for school practice and competitions. You can tell most of this is going out the other ear, but his eyes definitely, like, you see an eyebrow raise when you mention your surname. Oh no. <laughs> Blake, Bla do you, are you Reggie Blake's daughter by any chance? Yeah. And now the smile's a little forced. <laughs> and he looks, <laughs> he looks like a very disconcerting grin goes across his face. Like, ah, uh, most unfortunate what happened with the Blakes. They were promising business people before, well, you know, I'm sure you know. I remember enjoying many a business luncheon with Reggie. I, you must send him my regards. If I'd known that you were his daughter, I would have personally invited you myself. It's so nice to see the, the younger generation coming to see the advancements in the corporate world. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll let him know. You said you're you're an idol yourself. Well, in training, you know, through school. I, I wouldn't have seen Reggie as uh, raising someone musical, but he certainly has surprised me before. Um, yeah, it's just something I do for school. Something you do for school. <laughs> and he seems like, oh, preposterous. Like, I started a music entertainment company because I believe in the power of music to bring people together. You must you must believe in that sort of thing at least, don't you? Oh, of course. I love I love dance. I've been training in dance my whole life pretty much. Oh, yes, now I remember. I do believe he would tell me his daughter took ballet or what's it at some point. Uh, oh, so of course he's spent nothing but the best on you, I'm certain. How how are Reggie and Margaret doing, by any chance? I, what are they even doing without their money? Um, living normal lives, you know, like people do. I just, I cannot imagine. Reggie was always so used to living the high life. Like, <laughs> the fact that he hasn't jumped out a window is surprising to me, honestly. How does he even cope? I mean, he seems pretty chill about it, actually. It's My mom's mostly the mad one. Oh, yes. Margaret always was a little high-strung. <laughs> and he chuckles to himself very disconcertingly again. I would say passionate. Passionate is certainly a word for it, and passion is something that we love to see around Crimson Signal. I hope that you will bring some of your passion to the proceedings today. Um, and he grins and gives you a little nod as he shuffles off. Hey y'all! Hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I know we don't normally have a mid-episode break like this, but I wanted to set some time aside here because we actually have a sponsor for this episode. And before you groan and prepare your ad-skipping trigger fingers, 
Trust me, I, I know that feeling. I hate Squarespace too. The reason I'm putting the sponsorship here rather than at the end is because it's for a cause that I really do believe in and it's one that I want to get more people aware of regardless of whether they're sponsoring the podcast or not. So I wanted to give it the premium airspace that it deserves. And that's because our sponsor today is the Trans Closet. It's a charity project whose goal is to support trans and non-binary people with their transitions by offering free clothes for those who either can't access them for financial reasons or because of an unsupportive family situation. The clothes are put together in what are called trans packs, and each pack includes, at minimum, one full day outfit with a top, bottom, and socks, or dress and socks, and one set of pajamas. And the packs are really meant to be catered to each individual, so if you request one, you can also ask for extra items like accessories, shoes, bras, wigs, binders, and other things. Also, if you have any privacy and safety concerns, let them know and they will gladly disguise your package to look like it's from Amazon or another common brand, and will also include some nondescript bags for you to store your items in as well. The Trans Closet also ships internationally, so anyone who wants a trans pack can fill out a request form for one. If you want to request a pack or donate to help the Trans Closet fulfill more requests, you can head on over to their website, thetranscloset.org. It's a solo project at the moment, so the founder really, really could use all the support they can get in their efforts right now. If you're interested in keeping up to date with the Trans Closet, you can also go to twitch.tv slash the Trans Closet on Saturdays at 1 p.m. EST for weekly town halls and updates. And as of this episode's release, they are also going to be having a big charity stream on their Twitch channel on February 20th. So be sure to tune in for that if you can. Keep an eye on their Twitter at Trans Closet for more details on that. So yeah, definitely support the Trans Closet if you can. This is a really nice way to help make people's transitions a little easier and safer. Their website again is thetranscloset.org. Thank you all so very much for listening, and enjoy the rest of the show! He got a lot of information there. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I, I had to pull out a random name for your mother. <laughs> If we don't want that to be your mother's name, oh, I can replace it. That's fine. They can totally have normal white people names. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already established that his that your father's full name is uh, Reginald Frederick Blake. Yeah. <laughs> so his name was fine, at least. But I will say that um, as that uh, interaction went on further and further, by the end of it, Angie is clenching her fists, and I would actually like to mark angry. Ooh, sure. <laughs> so, as we all... well, That can be a, a good additional play. consequence to this. Yeah. Um, but as we know, that's definitely a sore spot for her. And here's... This guy, her other mortal enemy's dad. That's what she's assuming, because of, that's just what life does to her. <laughs> <laughs> He's certainly someone that your father had business dealings with in the past, at the very least. Yeah, yeah, but mostly it's just that's obviously a sore spot, and she's mad. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, especially the comment about her dad. That was... Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> The gentlest guy in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty clear that whoever this Clayton guy is, is not a great judge of character and really is only <laughs> focused on what will benefit him. Yeah. So, B, how do you think you're finishing up your little schmoozing and investigation? I think I've been uh, commenting a little about the decor, just trying to be look aloof and generally annoyed at the plants because they're non-native <laughs> and it's gonna be a nightmare to keep them. <laughs> Can I notice uh, that Angie is uh, getting upset? Oh, definitely, yeah. You can notice, like, the, the tail end of this conversation that she's having, for sure. She's doing the Arthur fist. Hey, you okay? And she crosses her arms and it's like her mortal enemy list is growing. <laughs> she's like... <laughs> Fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Totally fine. Who was that? I'm pretty sure that's the CEO of the company. Oh. Do you say anything? He knows my dad. Say no more. 
what's the vibe you're getting, because uh, this looks very polished to me. A little too polished. Yeah. And who talks to a child about their father offing himself because he got poor? I hated it too, but I'm totally fine. Wait, seriously? Sorry, I'd sort of jump in. I should probably check in. Was that joke too over the line? No. Okay, good. Not for me. No, not for me. Cool. Okay. (laughs) Okay, continue then. (laughs) No, it just made her mad. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he's a total dick. I bet that's Ashley's dad. Hmm. Can see where she gets it from. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, you kick this daughter's ass. You're probably going to get a chance to kick his too. Oh, yeah, I did kick her ass, didn't I? Oh, yeah, you did. It's always good to be reminded of. (laughs) Can I take the angry thing off now? (laughs) (laughs) If you want to, you can keep it if you think it'll benefit you. Yeah, no, I just feel like that would definitely appease her. (laughs) Like, oh, yeah, I totally, like, threw her onto the ground. (laughs) (laughs) Although, I think to clear anger, you have to actually break something. That's the mechanical thing that is required to remove angry. Right. Okay, so... We'll keep it there. Yeah. So you're but still yeah. angry in underneath the surface. Yeah. But appeased for now. Mm. <laughs> you can channel that anger healthily in some way at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, did you see anything? Just uh, the door over there. That's, they seemed like what, if anybody's doing any work today, it's going to be in there. Oh, yeah. There's like... Uh, there's guards there, right? Yeah, there's guards on a, yeah. on a few different doors, but some of them are like definitely clearly letting some of the executives in to different doors to let them have peeks at things. But that's the one door that is guarded and nobody is being let through except employees. Hmm. Wonder what kind of boring tech stuff goes on behind that door. Probably something boring like shrinking stages and... Yeah, someone writing code. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's the secret room back there. It's just like a code farm back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just a bunch of people on computers. You'll just find, like, a bunch of, like, strung out IT people back there, like, overworked and <laughs> in crunch time. You think uh, it could be worth checking out? Maybe the tour will allow us for them to at least tell us what they want to tell us is in there. Hmm. Their CEO is definitely smarmy, but I used to be rich, and they're all like that, so it's really hard to tell if he's legit or not. Okay. Well, just point me in the direction. I'll see if I can smart back. <laughs> Sounds good. So you're, you're going to try and approach the CEO again? Yes. All right. I do point. You know, I'm still mad, so. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, so yeah, he's, he he hasn't left the area yet. He is talking to uh, a few other people. You actually see that right now he's talking to a woman who looks like maybe a little younger than him, maybe about 40. She has kind of short, reddish, black feathered hair, some really amazing makeup, honestly. And she's very thin and has a very twiggy build that is accentuated with a very sharp business casual suit. Okay, I'm just going to walk in, like I have every right to be there, and, uh, sir, it's such a pleasure to finally meet you. I've been uh, a fan of your products for so long. It's such an honor to be here. And they, they both turn to you, and he doesn't seem, like, as immediately dismissive of you, because clearly you have s- style, at least, but he <laughs> is still a little taken aback, like, excuse me, do I know you? Except he's a little more polite about that. Excuse me, miss, do I know you? Oh, I'll forgive you if you don't. I'm Queen Bee. I'm new on the scene. Ah, yes, more and up-and-coming idols. Always good, always good to see. Especially on this, our inaugural tour event. Uh, there's certainly a few of you around, I see. The lady actually gives you a nod as well, like, Yes, I'm extremely excited to see so many of you here today. It's It warms my heart to see uh, newcomers are still coming up all the time, especially with all of their wonderful new... Uh, powers and talents being discovered all the time. Yes, it's a brave new world out there, and I'm so proud to be part of it. I've heard great things about Crimson Signal, and my good friend was just talking you up the other day. Uh, 
zero degrees, you may maybe you know. Oh yes! Oh Calvin! Oh yes, we know him very well. Oh, this is so good to hear. <laughs> I that was their name. <laughs> 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 Sorry, keep going. <laughs> yes, so, so Clayton, Mr. Cervantes, whatever we want to call him, <laughs> he he gives a grin and is like, yes, it's so good to see you. You saw the display at the Paradise the other day then. Ah, uh, glad to know that, that our advertising dollars were well spent there. Oh, I, I don't think there's any person who saw that show who could ever forget it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely not. Clearly he did not see this show. <laughs> I was counting and, on it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> The, the woman puts a finger to her lips and goes, Wait, oh yes, you were there, weren't you? I did catch a snatch of that. Uh, you, were, you were incredible. Someone who can, who can show up zero degrees like that is very impressive. You said your name was Queen Bee? Queen Bee, yes. We just had a little dance. A little dance? Darling, that was incredible. I, you, did Papaya in- introduce you? Yes. Uh, she extends her hand to you, and as she does, you start to realize the longer you look at her, the more familiar she starts to look. And you realize as she reaches to shake your hand and starts to say who she is, she says, It's very nice to meet you, Queen Bee. My name is Sasha Samuel, and you realize you know her because this is the head of Starforge Records. Holy fuck. <sighs> Such a pleasure. I'm delighted and I, I'm so glad you enjoyed me. It was an extemporaneous thing, we didn't really have time to rehearse, but I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. Well, it's still clear that you've put a lot of effort into, into learning your craft to be able to pull that off on the fly like that. And with such panache, I, it's, um, it's fantastic. I, I just, I can't even... Oh, now that you, now that you remind me that it happened and i'm just i'm <laughs> i'm buzzing about it ah and she <laughs> she gives you a little point <laughs> with oh, a long <laughs> with a long finger <laughs> the finger guns not even a finger gun just like a little point <laughs> like yeah. a semi finger gun cuz she's an old person mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> well not old she's 40 40 isn't old but whatever it is to a 16 year old it is to a 16 year old she's ancient <laughs> by that standard well it's uh Queen Bee's kinda having a hard time keeping the mask up because this is a big deal. But uh... Uh, also, I should say since you this would probably be common knowledge as well about this person because she is a fairly well-known figure. Mm-hmm. Sasha Samuel is she's the head of Starforge Records, and when she founded Starforge Records, she used to be an idol herself back in the day, back at the very beginning of the whole super idol phenomenon. So she was one of the very first super idols that got popular before she ended up having to retire and start focusing more on Starforge full time. Do I know what her powers were? Um, She had some very flashy teleportation abilities, like she could go wherever she wanted with a big poof of like colored smoke and sparkles and whatnot. And it was a simple power, but because it was new and fresh, she was able to do a lot with it and get a lot of attention with it. Nice. Uh, And her idol name back in the day was Sasha Lemuse. Well, what can I say? It's such an honor to be recognized by Sasha Lemuse herself. (laughs) And she chuckles a bit. Oh, it's been a bit since my Sasha Lemuse days, but it is, it is always nice to meet a fan. But I, I very much hope that we can both take this tour today and both take in what Mr. Cervantes has to show us. Starforge is certainly interested in providing the best technology we can to our artists, so of course we are interested in seeing what Crimson Signal has to offer. Absolutely. Well, I think you will be very impressed with their stage technology. Oh, so you've seen some of this as well, have you? Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if you intended that, but... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. Just uh, the tiniest part of it, but it was pretty impressive. Mm. Well, and I know I'm certainly lo- looking forward to learning more myself, so... <laughs> Here's to our both both of our education today, I suppose. Here's to it. And yes. Oh, I would be remiss... Uh, Angie, could you come over? Oh, yeah, I do. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm just kind of standing somewhere nearby, um, <laughs> trying to read another plaque or whatever, and just be like, seriously, who can read these things? And then <laughs> it called over. <laughs> Angie, dear, I just wanted to introduce you. You know, Miss Lamuse. Oh my god, hi, I'm such a fan. I could never have pulled any of what I did the other day without Angie. Oh, yes, it was, yes, you were there as well. Ah, I see. Oh, yes, what was your, what was your name? Uh, my name's Evangeline Blake. Oh no, honey, your idol name. Uh, Bane Raven. And also, thanks to uh, Papaya, Sasha did not see your embarrassing fall on your butt. <laughs> oh, because she wasn't at the event. <laughs> no, but, yeah, because uh, yeah. Queen Bee asked Papaya to delete that bit of the footage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> so she only saw the most flattering parts of your performance. And so she's also, like, just gushing over, like, what she saw from you as well. Like, oh, you're clearly very sharp on your feet. I that That kind of that kind of practice in both of you but are you both part of a, the same idol group in that case are you are you trying to become a dance idol group it, yes we're part of the four commit now or, oh my god okay. <laughs> she would call it the four commit now yeah <laughs> the boring mcnally yeah <laughs> we're part of the fort mcnally idol club oh ford Mc- i'm not even sure i know where that is uh, well Talent can come from anywhere, I certainly know. Well, that's... And, and as Clayton gives a bit of a grimace there, because uh, he definitely doesn't believe the same thing. <laughs> Nanji shrugs and she says, that's right, uh, this school hasn't done that well before, but we're hoping to, with our combined talents, put us on the map, so to speak. Yes, uh, well, I certainly think you have a great shot at it if you continue to do things like that, like what I saw in that video. Goodness. Uh, thank you. That means a lot coming from you. Well, I really hope to see what you do when the, in the preparations for the Sing Star tournament this year. I, I have great hopes for the both of you. Like nodding and smiling. <laughs> and if if you need if you need a good word from the event organizers, she reaches into a, a very snazzy looking pocket and pulls out two business cards between her fingers and gives one to each of you. Take my card. Oh, thank you. Thank you, miss. I can't promise you a leg up in the competition because that would be that would not be fair. But certainly if you need a good reference for the competition itself, you know who to call. And Angie's looking at Queen like O M G. Yeah, these you have these very nicely embossed cards <laughs> that say like just they they literally just say Sasha in the middle of them. <laughs> <laughs> And, the, and on the, the very bottom in tiny font is the phone number in, <laughs> that you would need to call. What if, like, on the back it's like a QR code? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, really fancy looking that sparkles or something. Yeah, on the back it has it it's has a, yeah it has a gold embossed QR code uh, with some <laughs> stars on the border. Yay. Uh, so anyway, as you're you're sort of finishing this conversation up, is there anything else you want to say to Mr. Cervantes b- <laughs> before you finish up this conversation, by the way? or I say nothing to him. I'm just like... <laughs> Fair enough. F that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not as nearly as interesting as <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> oh, Mr. Cervantes, uh, is, is this your building, right? <laughs> you certainly noticed, I suppose. Yes, it is. I mean, it would be hard not to notice what with the color, but <laughs> it's very, it, yes. it's certainly a bold statement. <laughs> also, I think I said his suit was purple earlier. It's It should be dark red. Like, yeah, like <laughs> it red. would only be fitting. I, I think I was thinking purple because I just rewatched Speed Racer recently. There's a That's the color of the CEO's suit in that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he's he's got this nice um, dark red suit and he sort of adjusts it as... <laughs> He says, well, it's, yes, it certainly is my building, and it's certainly convenient that the C reflects both the name of my company and myself. <laughs> yes, that's such good branding. Ex- right? <laughs> yes, such a huge C. The, my social media managers tell me it's it's like lightning in a bottle for it. Well, uh, that's certainly a young man who found gainful employment. 
<laughs> oh wow. I am going I am priding myself on becoming one of the city's next big main employers. Just you wait. There will be much gainful employment to be had around here. Anyway, so you hear well, you hear a signal from towards the front of the lobby, and you see that's where Papaya's gone. She's apparently leading this tour because she she has a Crimson Signal name badge on. She clearly seems to be a Crimson Signal employee also. Hmm. Hmm. And she says, All right, everybody. Everybody gather around. We're ready to start the tour now. Uh, and we're going to take you through every major main area of the building uh, where the magic happens. And everybody sort of starts to get excited and look kind of mill towards where she is and she starts leading you definitely not towards that door you saw earlier you're going to one sort of on the opposite end of the lobby but we'll end in the lobby right oh yeah the the tour will end in the lobby but you're going around to some other areas of the building for the tour okay no i'm asking because she's totally gonna ask about that door when we get back to the lobby oh yeah sure sure (laughs) (laughs) yes anyway so Papaya starts to usher people through some of the doors to some of the other areas of the building, and you you tour, well, you tour a fancy corporate building, <laughs> but you do find uh, some interesting highlights along the way. They definitely have a few things that are set up specifically for this tour, like uh, one of the areas you find at that one point is an area where there's a focus on their stage technology and they have like stuff like a selfie stage and a little live stream stage where like you can stream yourself doing like a little dance move or something if you want to. People are taking turns going through this live stream stage. Um, (laughs) So if you want to do that, you can. Yeah, I I definitely go to the live stream stage. All right. So this is streaming directly to Crimson Signal's um, social media page. What would you like to do on this live stream stage? You have maybe, like, 15 to 30 seconds. I don't know. I'd probably do, like, a, you know, one of those classic ballet spins that, you know, you learn when you're a baby, so it doesn't take her much effort to do. Like, I wouldn't say she, it would have to be a role. It'd okay, be more sure, like, yeah. So nothing super You know, impressive. she's just having some fun, so. <laughs> and do you say anything, or do you just do this move? Uh, she's gonna, like, point to the camera at the end, and then I'll go off. <laughs> So it'll be up to people to connect the dots between your performance on Monday and this here. Okay. Um, And is Queen Bee going to do anything for this stream, or or is she refraining? Oh, yes. If the ceiling is low enough to allow it, she'd like to do a quick uh, four-step upside down. Oh, sure, yeah. We'll say that the... you We'll say there's a little platform you can ask to be lowered into the camera frame view. And that's a, that's a simple power usage, so I, I probably wouldn't even ask you to roll unleash your powers. Yeah, so you do a quick ceiling jump and dance? Yes, and so it, great things are happening here at Crimson Signal, and I'm, and I'm happy to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't see the social media reactions yet, but we'll see how this turns out. <laughs> I can't do worse than last time. Yeah. Well, you're getting more you're getting yourself out there more. That's always good for <laughs> for an idol to do. Okay. Anyway, so you you go through this this stage kind of like promotion area. You of course see there's that tech that you've already seen. You see there's the they're they're called the the ultra portable stages is what they're calling them. Now these we know. Mm-hmm. So that's obviously a big focus of this part of the building, but there are also regular stages that they make as well. Like they make regular permanent stages and also semi-permanent and regular portable stages. <laughs> I like semi-permanent stages. <laughs> How long does it stay? <laughs> well, I, I mean, as in like, it's it, it's something that you can have there for a while and then move to another venue with relative ease if need be. Right, right. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. After it expires in three months, that's it. You have to get another one. <laughs> it's forced obsolescence of stages. This yeah. is what Crimson Signal's endgame is. Yeah. They're the apple of the idol world. Yeah. <laughs> There's just a moment where, like, the technology that you need and the app technology is just too much memory for the stage, so you have to replace the stage constantly. <laughs> Yeah, you, it's like a. Well, this might even be something that they produce. They could, they could, 
have like a stage that's made out of hard light so that it's like extra flashy and you can do special things with it, but it takes up a lot of energy and memory and you have to replace it every few months. Yeah. <laughs> Cause then it like the I don't know, the cathodes wear out or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Supposedly anyway. But they they add uh, they advertise it as like incredible uh usage life lasts for months. <laughs> <laughs> months lasts for many performances uh, so it's like, at least five <laughs> and there's an asterisk and a, and a tiny block of like really dense text underneath yeah <laughs> Uh, so you see all of that. You see, <clears throat> you see in other areas. There's there's other product theme areas. So you see they also make uh, speakers. They make like some ultra small speakers, large speakers, custom shapes. They can like make speakers that are like in the shape of letters that spell out the name of your group or that curve around the stage in interesting ways. And there are some speakers that even just make interesting custom sound waves that really shouldn't be possible. But that's um, hmm. part of the kind of tech that they're developing, I suppose, that's <laughs> pushing the boundaries of what science is capable of. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, and they also make mixers and microphones. Uh, they even do some, they do instruments. They make some electric guitars. They do light stick control systems. That's That probably Ooh. sparks your interest. Oh, <laughs> and I'm lingering there. Like, longer than all the other displays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, testing all the settings and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> do you take a picture for Karen of all the different light sticks? I do. I do. I have a video and I'm narrating the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you narrate the the way this the system controls the light sticks and like what the commands are cuz you know that she's semi-technical so she'll probably understand it better than you. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll like slowly pan over to the price tag and I'll just and then be like Maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next century. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so you go through their like big product show floors. Basically, this is starting to feel more like a like a trade convention than a tour, really. And that's probably what it is, honestly. Yeah, they're trying to sell their products, and yeah, they're trying to get investors interested, and also in to get young idols interested in promoting their products. Mm -hmm. Um, and. They do give you a like a cursory look at some other areas of the building. They they give you a look at what looks like an R and D lab. It looks like a, a pretty like what you'd imagine an R and D lab would look like. Lots of lots of white, lots of computers, lots of towers of God knows what mechanical stuff. The guy in the lab coat. The guy in the lab coat. <laughs> yep. The the safety glasses. <laughs> it looks exactly like what you'd expect an R and D lab to look like. Yeah. <laughs> Wearing gloves for some reason. Yep. <laughs> Well, you can see like they're tr they're making like microchips and whatnot, so they need like the gloves to keep like the static out of there. Right, right. Which they explain at length. Yeah. Well, actually, they don't explain it that much. Like Papaya is explaining a little bit of it, but she's actually not letting people like get too far into the room, just because. Well, probably she doesn't want people to interrupt the work that's going on in there. But she brings people into kind of like a little viewing area that they've set up at the lab and is explaining some of what's going on, but not in like great detail. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah. and this is where they make the, this is where they make all of the machinery and develop how it works. And look at that guy making a microchip. That's, that's probably what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this isn't her area of expertise. Yeah. <laughs> Oh look that that the, that woman soldering something over there. It looks important. I bet it's the next great thing. And of course, she's during this whole tour. She's got her selfie stick out and is live streaming the the whole tour as well, <laughs> making sure to get <laughs> the most famous faces in the shot as as often as she can. Mm -hmm. I feel like Angie doesn't show up at all. No, she doesn't. <laughs> no. Queen Bee shows up a little bit, but not much. Was... Usually in the background of shots. Anyway, so she shows you that. She also shows you sort of like a factory type area where some of the products are getting made as well. This area as well looks like kind of like very clean and bright as a factory area goes. <laughs> the people are in like kind of like white 
those like coverall suits that you wear when you're in a, an environment where <laughs> you don't want to be exposed to like a bunch of stuff, uh, like right, dust or right. like flying sparks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it looks very like clean is the word that I would have for it. And yeah, there's they take you around through those areas, the uh, similar sort of stuff. And you finally end up back at the lobby and Papaya starts handing out um, goodie bags to everybody, to the executives. Clearly, they get nicer goodie bags than everybody else does. I mean, do I really want that investment magazine with all of the numbers and stuff in it? I don't even want that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, your dad might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, he's still a financial advisor. He's just so chill that his clients still want to stick around. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and the the lesser known idols get like, I don't know, like the equivalent of a, an anime con swag bag. <laughs> you get a little plastic bag with some bookmarks in it, basically. Lovely. <laughs> some advertisements for other conventions. Yep. <laughs> uh, maybe you get like, I don't know, a slap bracelet <laughs> that says Crimson Signal on it. Sure. I'm wearing the slap bracelet. <laughs> yeah, me too. I raise my hand. The hand that's wearing like the snap bracelet to try and get Papaya's attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As Papaya is uh, handing out the, the swag bags and trying to move away from you, you raise your hand and try to get her attention. Um, Papaya. Mm, yes. She looks like she's uh, in a hurry to get to other more important people. What's in the room over there? And I like start walking towards it. <laughs> Oh, nothing, nothing. That's that's a strictly employee area only. There, there's just a bunch of code monkeys back there anyway. You wouldn't find it very interesting. Oh, and like the break room and stuff. Exactly. We don't want... Yeah. You know how annoying it is for people to, to enter into your break room while you're having a break? Nobody likes that. Um, well, I don't have a job, but I assume that that part sucks. Hmm. Maybe you'll learn someday. Maybe. Can we see it anyway? No, I, we do not have authority to show you that area, unfortunately. We do have to keep some secrets for ourselves now, don't we? Yeah. Well, I guess I don't want to watch some boring people eat anyway. You're right. You're right. They have very... They're just a lot of boring sandwiches. Somebody's microwaving fish. You wouldn't like it. Yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and are you still walking towards the room or, <laughs> or away from it at this point? I'm walking away from Papaya, but I'm trying to see if I can, like, if there's a way I can sneak in. <laughs> hmm, I, I'm feeling vindictive, I so wonder, even if... I wonder if assess the situation would work here. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to roll assess the situation, I'd let you do that. Sure. Hope it goes better than the last one. Oh, I guess we'll find out. Oh. <laughs> that's a five so how would you how about you tell me what you're well, trying to do and then i'll see how it goes assess the situation like what's isn't there questions oh you don't get to I'm ask not, any on a miss i would say i was trying to go talk to the guards <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this could be interesting sure go up and talk to that guard <laughs> yeah all right, so you you approach kind of you wait for Papaya to be looking somewhere else, which doesn't take long, and you sort of mosey through the crowd and maybe behind some of the palm trees, very, very 007 style, and you make it up to where the guard is, and he, before you get too close, he he raises a hand and is like, "Stop right there! You're not allowed in here." Oh, that's not the bathroom. I, would I be guarding a bathroom? I don't think I would have been hired to, for that. I wouldn't have taken the job for that. I mean, it could have been a really nice bathroom. Well, I know that people like Mr. Cervantes feel like they deserve a bathroom like that, but no, there are limits on what we can hire a security guard for. Is there... You sure it's not a bathroom? There are bathrooms back there, but they're for employees only. And he's getting very exasperated with you. And if you don't stop pushing the issue, I'm going to have to have you thrown out. Okay, sorry. And then I just walk away. Because <laughs> it's like, I figure the way she saw it was she was going to try and like dart in while they were distracted. But 
she like appeared across the wrong palm tree in right in front of the guard <laughs> instead of right behind the guard. So she was like, bathrooms? That's what they say in movies, right? <laughs> All right. And as you walk away from the door, as you look over your shoulder, uh, you notice that the guard is speaking into a walkie-talkie and you can't make out what he's saying. Um, is there a bathroom in the lobby? Yes, there is. There is a bathroom door, maybe towards the middle of the room. Like, okay. Um, like the middle of the room along the wall, I mean. I'm just going to, I don't know, maybe act like, oh, there it is. I'm just going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> He it doesn't seem to to face him. He's still talking into his walkie-talkie. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she's gonna go in the bathroom and I don't know, comb her hair or something, reapply <laughs> her makeup. <laughs> and as as she's doing so, after a minute or two, two female security guards come in and both stand behind you and look very menacingly at you. We got a call about someone trying to get into restricted areas. I thought it was a bathroom, and I clearly found the bathroom. It was very clearly not a bathroom. We're not going to buy that story. Okay. We're going to have to ask you to leave, miss. Please come with us. Okay, but I'm keeping the goodie bag. They snatched the goodie bag from you. What? <laughs> My bookmarks! <laughs> you could have used those for, like, making a straight edge on a schedule. <laughs> exactly! There was um, a really nice design that would have been perfect for a scrapbook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they start to, to usher you out of the bathroom and towards the exit of the building. Uh, Queen Bee, what are you doing during all this? <laughs> I see that, and, uh, well, that just cannot stand. This has just been killer for killer day for one. Angie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just nailing it. The other guard is still at this place, right? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so that's not enough of a distraction. Well, then I'm just going to walk to the the other security guards. And so, what is the problem here? What's happening? She was trying to access a restricted area. We will not stand for that. We will have to remove her from the premises. The bathroom. They took my goodie bag. That's just petty. People who are being removed from the premises don't get free crimson signal swag. I was just looking for the bathroom. And she found it. The problem is solved. Why Why can't we just go along? She was very clearly not looking for a bathroom. A bathroom would not be guarded by a security guard. This is clearly suspicious, and we're not going to let this stand. Oh, because nobody has ever stolen the soap from your bathrooms. Clearly you've never met my mother. <laughs> I feel like one of you is trying to provoke them. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, I'm gonna try and provoke them to distract them at least long enough for Angie to get the goodie bag back. <laughs> All right. Can I assist? Oh yeah, definitely. You can always assist with team. And I probably need it. Rolling superior? There's a lot of rolling superior this session. <laughs> yeah, I have a minus one to superior. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. Great investigation I'm adding, team. I'm already adding the bonus. Uh, Plus one. Okay. Ooh, very good. Just <laughs> barely. just barely. You got a seven. Uh, so on a seven to nine, I get to choose whether they stumble, they err, or they overreact. I guess they err, yeah. So they err and you gain a critical opportunity. So they, they start... Actually, the, the two ladies stop for a second and they're like, no, wait, there was that one time when George was on, like, the klepto soap binge. Like, what... How how many pieces of soap did he steal during that period? I don't know. And they, they're talking with each other about this employee who was stealing all the soap. <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, you can take that opportunity to leave. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to take the bag and run. <laughs> hey! <laughs> they're, they're so deep in this conversation, too, they don't even notice that the, the bag is gone. <laughs> <laughs> They were, like, holding some other stuff. Because this was a very, like, talked about incident around the around the water cooler <laughs> when this <Yeah>. happened. <laughs> well, in that case, if they don't notice me taking it, I'm just gonna take it and walk out like a normal person. Okay. So it don't look suspicious. <laughs> okay. So you, you're <laughs> exiting the building, then? <laughs> yeah. Alright. Are you following, Queen Bee? Not yet. I'm going to do a big round of goodbyes to everybody. 
Oh, sure, sure. I'm just gonna look at my phone and be like, oh, I'm so sorry, I got a thing. <laughs> oh, it's been it's been truly fantastic, and I hope we can do this again, maybe discuss things. It was truly a pleasure. Papaya, please add me. I'll I'll talk to you. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure you'll be seeing lots of me and my followers on social media. Oh, I just can't wait. I will say, uh, you probably... She's not being very good at subterfuge, by the way. You probably will see us in a lot more positive light the more that you can spread the word about Crimson Signal's amazing products. Oh, so that's how it's going to be, is it? Well, yes. Why do you think we invited you here? I told you that Crimson Signal would be interested in your talent. If you are interested in promoing their products and maybe posting a few promoted hashtags, you know, we could work out some things. Yeah. And if not, there's certainly other ways that my social media following could react. Well, good thing we're the best of friends. Absolutely, isn't it? She gives you a very winning smile. Yes. I'm leaving. It's not over. Yeah, she gives she gives you a very... If a wave can be smug, she gives you a smug wave. Uh, and are you saying bye to anybody else, or...? Just go for a quick uh, run of um, shaking hands, even people I was not introduced to. Just, huh? It was such a pleasure. We must do this again, and just leave. You pass out your, your social media handle to a few of those people, I'm sure. Absolutely. I, I hope you realize that your following after this will probably be a mix of, like, people who saw your performance and a, a weird amount of brand accounts. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's views. Yep. <laughs> Got a hustle. And brand accounts. All right, so yeah, you finish up and you, you go outside to meet Angie out front. <laughs> <laughs> no harm in courting investors for Idol Club at school. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, yeah, we, we could use some new dampeners. So that was clearly evil, am I right? You, you yes. saw the evil in the air. So evil. Like, who? that's a really dark red. Yes. I mean, it was nice at first, but the yellow text? Like, only an evil person would put the yellow text like that so you can't read about the company. Also, you, you've seen their earpod things? That battery is not replaceable. That just goes in the landfill. Yeah, yeah, totally unreusable. And that that stage that just you can use up to five times. What's the point? I mean, yeah, if your shoes last longer than the stage, you have a problem. Yeah, <sighs> the light stick thing was pretty cool, but I'm deleting this video. <laughs> it was like a five minute video too, but she's like. We'll just get something somewhere else. Maybe Karen can build one. As far as I know, she can do anything. And I'm like tapping my phone like angrily as I delete the... <laughs> there, it's gone. Wasn't even that cool anyway. Yeah. They're in the dumb secret bathroom. Anyway, thanks for covering for me again. That's cool. It's Gambo Shanks. I totally forgot that word. <laughs> You'll have another call to use it, I'm sure, at some point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Skimbleshanks. Also, we might have to end Papaya at some point. She's kind of a bitch. She is. She didn't even know anything about that microchip technology. Why was she even the tour guide? I don't know. She works for them. She's worked with them. If you're courting investors, you should have more technical knowledge than that. I don't know. But I'm not a tech expert or anything, but it just seemed like you should at least know what they're doing in there. <laughs> not, look at them soldering something. Can you believe that? Like, she didn't even care. Yeah. Those are probably the people that do the most important work for the company, while people like her get paid for talking in front of a camera about nothing. Anyway, uh, I'm glad I could still get the goodie bag. These are some cute bookmarks. Oh. Crap, I forgot mine. Okay, I'm coming back. <laughs> okay, well, you're not kicked out, so I'm sure they'll just let you come in and grab it. Hope so. Yes, and in indeed they do. Um, 
So you get back into the building. You actually get in um, just in time to see that they are actually wrapping up the tour. And Papaya actually is handing off her, like, master ceremonies role to someone else to end the thing. It looks like it's a man in a lab coat who is finishing up. Uh, He's giving, like, a little bit of a keynote speech. And he's kind of like this kind of strawberry blonde hair, nice glasses. He actually looks like a fairly, like charismatic looking person like he's smiling he he's speaking very clearly um he seems like he's glad to be there and he's saying like honored guests thank you so much for attending our inaugural event today i'm so happy uh, that so many of you are interested in the company crimson signal is determined to provide this growing industry with all the kinds of products that they need to keep up with today's high flying super powered world i'm sorry i couldn't be with you there for most of it but as you know things are very busy around here with research and development, but you've seen all our amazing products that are going to market that I've personally overseen the development of, and I'm just, I'm so excited at the reception we've been getting. Rave reviews online, hundreds of influencer reviews lined up on IdleTube, thousands of Google reviews. It's, it's, it's more, oh my goodness, it's more than I ever could have dreamed of when I was just a young guy working my way through my engineering degree. It's, I'm, I think you're all witnessing the start of something really special. And I really cannot stress enough how lucky we are to have all of you as investors or promoters or anyone else who wants to be involved. Thank you very much. And Papaya gives him a little bit of a round of applause to signal everybody should applaud. Uh, And says, yes, thank you very much. That was Dr. Leon Renard, head scientist in charge of R&D. And we hope that we will see your names and faces around here again very soon. And like a, she holds the selfie stick out to give like a big panorama picture of the people in the crowd, uh, which has Queen Bee very small in the background by the door. <laughs> and a bunch of people in suits. And a bunch of people in suits and a few <laughs> scattered idols in the crowd. Yeah, we'll meet each other again. So yeah, after that, you you head back out to meet Angie. And I think that sort of finishes up your... <laughs> your exciting tour for today. Actually, as you as you head out, your phone buzzes and you get a, a text from Karen asking, so how was today? Bit underwhelming, kind of mercenary. Some fancy toys, though. Hmm. Well, certainly it takes more than fancy toys to make a company. Um, she texts back. But it was cool. Like, what kind of vibe did you get from them? Mm-hmm. Kind of evil. Noted. And she puts a little check mark emoji underneath. Okay, well, I think the problem is now as good as solved. Karen's on it. Meanwhile, in a cold, foggy slice of nowhere, a granite golem in a leather jacket stirs. She doesn't know how long she's been unconscious for, just that she was dragged here by that thing, whoever it was, and zapped with a shock so powerful that she passed out. She has had a few brief periods of awareness since then, but the air here is so thick that it's hard to stay awake and focused for long. She has a few fuzzy memories from those periods, of robed phantoms moving through the fog, people in lab coats with scientific instruments and serious faces, the faint outlines of large cylindrical chambers further away from her, the same shape as the one she and her best friend are in now. Drew lies next to her, still unconscious on the small cot they've given him. Anne's own cot is more like a large slab, the only thing that could hold her weight. As she puts a hand to her head and fights off a dull migraine, She hears a slot open up in the smooth chrome walls of the holding chamber, and a tray with two simple meals and two large plastic bottles of water slides into view. Anne glares at the tray. She pushes herself up with a slight wobble, still woozy, and stomps over to the clear side of the chamber where she can see the rest of the space around them. She doesn't immediately see any of the phantom guards. Cracking her rocky knuckles, Anne pulls back a fist and starts pummeling the window. Force field. Whatever this material is made of, it doesn't want to give. But Anne doesn't care. She just needs to hit it. 
She's not just gonna sit here like a bird in a cage and take this. As long as she has her wits about her, she's gonna fight. Fight for herself, fight for Drew, and fight to see the others again. She only stops when a roar sounds across the foggy space. The sound shakes even Anne to the bone, and she pauses with her fists still raised. Drew finally stirs at this as well, blearily looking at Anne with fear and uncertainty in his eyes. The roar is coming from one of the other holding chambers she can see across from them. She can't make out much, but there is... something in there. A dark, hulking shape paces within. It roars again as two of the foggy phantoms approach control panels on the side of the chamber. A few button pushes later, and the roaring ceases. Anne turns back to look at Drew. She's shaken, but still determined. They're going to get out of here. She doesn't know how, but they will. They have to. She'll see to that. Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG. Our cast for today was T as Evangeline Blake, Luca as Queen B, and Aaron Cerise as the GM. Special thanks go to today's featured VIP patrons, Amaril, Lady Plague, Wolfie, and Jordan Cuttlefish. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com, Freesound.org, and the YouTube Audio Library. If you liked this episode, please consider liking and commenting on the YouTube upload, or leaving us a review on your podcasting platform of choice. You can also support this podcast monthly on Patreon at patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise, or through a one-time donation on Ko-fi at ko-fi.com slash Aaron Cerise. Super Idols RPG is a proud member of Be Gay Roll Dice, a network for RPG podcasts made by LGBTQIA plus creators. You can check out all the great independent queer shows on our network at twitter.com slash begayrolldice. Stay tuned for a promo from the one-shot-focused podcast, Tabletop Roulette. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone in between or irrespective of that binary, pull up a chair and put down your chips. It's time for a Tabletop Roulette. We are an actual play tabletop anthology podcast with a rotating cast of players, GMs, and games running one-shots and short campaigns focused on uplifting people from marginalized backgrounds. You can find us every Friday, wherever you find your podcasts, on Twitter at TTRPG Roulette, or on Discord at the link in our Twitter and in our show notes.